A pleasant good evening. You're listening to the program, The Voice of Pilgrim, emanating from the Pilgrim Baptist Temple, St. James Road, where our senior pastor is Reverend Dr. Leroy Nathaniel Major. We are known as the church with the open doors. Hence, our hearts are also open to you. For more information on this radio broadcast, you may contact our church at 393-3644. Sponsors for this radio broadcast are Juno Telecom Bahamas Limited, 376-8999, Easy Trucking, 357-4394, BOS Martin Trucking, 436-8189, and The Craft Shack, Wolf Road opposite the Windsor Park, at 829-7412 and also the fine members of the Pilgrim Baptist Temple. Welcome to the Voice of Pilgrim. My name is Pastor Leroy Major. I am the senior pastor teacher here at Pilgrim Baptist Temple located on St. James Road in the Camper community. Again, we want to thank God for four years of the Voice of Pilgrim. And all of our listeners out there, I thank you so much for tuning into our broadcast. You have called, you have sent notes saying how much of a blessing this broadcast has been to you. Now that we are going into our fourth season, we're going to change our format. We're going to bring this radio program or this program um, into, in a form of a biblical talk show. We have two new hosts, Brother Travis Hall and Mr. Ken Curtis. These two young men will take this program to another level. And so with that, I take this and I turn this over to our new host. God bless you. Good evening. Welcome to the Voice of Pilgrim. I'm Travis Hall. And my name is Minister Kenry Curtis. Tonight, our topic is 2021. Our show is Bible-based. So our scripture reference tonight is Psalm 18, verse 2. And it reads, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. You have already met, met our first guest, Pastor Major, our second guest, Minister Sabrina Martin. Good evening. Pastor Major, due to the pandemic, what do you see the vision of Pilgrim and the nation moving forward? Well, when you take a look at 2020, and compared with 2021, the word that comes to me is recovery. We have lost so much um, in 2020. Um, a lot of lives, a lot of jobs, um, a lot of people have lost their dignity. And the year 2021 is a year of recovery, not only for our church, but recovery for our nation. Because we have went, we went through so much. And I believe that this is a year that we just got to press and just recover. Because when it comes to recovery, um, Brother Travis, um, they, they, there is a process, you know. Um, I can think of a, a scripture verse where the Bible tells us in, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse uh, 5 and 6, where we have to trust God. So if we're going to recover anything in this season because of what we lost last year, we have to truly trust God. And the Bible tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know, understand? Not half it. you got to trust Him with all your heart. And as long as you trust God with all your heart, the Bible tells us that He will direct our path. Okay? And so, the word for our church and the word for this country should be recovery. And recovery is we go after we go after what we have lost. And in doing that, we must now put our focus in our God, who says if we come, believing in faith, he would grant us. And we know we've lost some stuff. The only thing, things I believe we won't recover is a lost family member or a lost soul. But things, items, Whatever we've lost, when it's personal items, I believe that if we go to God in faith believing, God will grant us the blessings that we had before. I believe it will come in a more abundant blessing in this year. 2021 is the year of recovery and the year of blessings. 
But how do we convince those that last year went through so much and don't really have that faith that the body of Christ and Christians have? How do we? How do they feel encouraged or be convinced that this year will be a better year for them? Okay, like I said, Proverbs. Like I said, Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. In other words. In this season, in, uh, during this process, you can't come half stepping. In first Samuel chapter 30, David back was against the wall. All right? He just came from Ziglag, and, and he realized when he got back home, he realized that his, his family was taken, all the wives were taken, the children were taken, the, the houses were destroyed with fire, all of his wealth was gone. Okay? But the Bible tells us that David inquired of the Lord. In other words, listen, I'm in a pandemic. I have lost everything. What do I need to do? He require of the Lord. All right? And this way, this way it comes when, when, when I said, you need to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not half-stepping. Okay? All your heart. All your ways. Acknowledge Him. And He will direct. Okay? So David inquired of the Lord. And David asked, Lord, shall I uh, pursue? Shall I go after the enemy? All right? God told David, I want you to pursue. And not only pursue, I want you to recover all. And so, like, like Minister Martin said, if, if we are going to recover, we got to pursue. There's something that we have to do. We have to press, press for it. You understand? We just can't lay down and play there. We got to go after it. You lost your job? Okay, let's go get a better job. Not the one you had. You got to get a better one. You, 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 you lost your car, you lost your house, you lost your dignity. Okay, let's get that restored. So, so this pandemic should teach us a lesson that we can depend on things. Sometimes, I'm, I'm, I'm Brother Travis, what we need to do is say, you know something? I'm tired of working for people. Let me start my own business. You understand? And this is what it's all about. So this pandemic should take us to another level in our lives. Trusting God to take us to another level. As, as, as churches, what, what, do you, what advice do you give churches um, moving forward? Um, because we, you can see a, a big decline in membership and people being interested in churches. What, what advice do you think the church should take on going through 2021? I think the first thing the church needs to do, the church needs to be an example. Okay? We have to, we have to set the president. We, if, if we say that we represent the kingdom of God in its fullest, fullest therefore we have to portray that. We got to preach that. We have to show that. All right? And in doing that, we must teach the word of God. All right? Because the Bible tells us, listen, the word of God is a strong power. All right? The righteous run into it and they are safe. Okay? And as the righteous can run into it and safe, therefore the righteous need to let the lost man know, I can help you. There is a God that I serve that can help you. All right? And so we need to say this respectfully. We need to sell God good. We need to sell God right. This is what Jesus said, you know. The Bible said when he came, he came teaching truth. Men are attracted to truth. And as long as you teach the truth, the Bible said the truth shall set you free. Set you free. That's all it is. So we need to teach the truth, the word of God, and that will change a man. That will change his, his, his movement. That will change his ideology. Because the word of God is truth. And the word of God is life. That's what man wants. Mankind wants truth, yes. and they want life. Uh, this question can go for you. Uh, um, what about the sinners, the, the, the people, the outsiders? What about what about them? What if they are so scarred from the church because of past experiences for our church homes they was too, and they don't even want to give God a try anymore? What what advice do you give them in regards of having a bad experience? trying out different churches before in the past? Well, for us who name the name of Christ, first and foremost, we must live a life where we portray Christ. The others will see Jesus on the inside of us. We demonstrate Christ. And, and if we live that life of Christ, no one can come point a finger in our face and say, well, we're not doing what we have been mandated to do. We are known by, okay, we are we are our father's children. And so if we if we are serving 
the father and the devil, then we portray the devil's standard. But if we are serving God, then we, we, we are portraying God's standard. And God's standard is life everlasting. And so if we live this good godly life in the front of persons who are unsaved, those persons should be drawn to Christ by our lifestyle, our life living. But if we live a double standard life, then we, we, we are causing persons to wonder, well, if I'm going to serve God or I'm going to serve the devil because I'm watching Sister Sabrina and she has a style over there on the day and tomorrow she has another style. I'm watching Brother Kendrick and he has another style. What do I do? We must follow the leading of Christ. And he left us his commandments. That is our daily guideline. There are ten commandments and those are what we supposed to be living when we want to cause others to follow Christ. Our life living should be one that we live daily and cause persons to come to Christ. And could I add something to that? Listen, the bottom line is Jesus is the answer. Alright, that's it. Point blank. So a lost man gets scarred by a Christian. Alright? So the first thing we need to understand, we need to establish the spirit of forgiveness. Forgiveness really and truly comes from Jesus Christ. So if 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 this person come face to face and acknowledge Jesus Christ, trust Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior, then that spirit of forgiveness will kick in. Because he realized, you know something, that place in his flesh. We all have sinned, we all have fallen short. Okay? Not not one of us are perfect. But all of us could forgive. And so it be we as individuals learn how to forgive and, 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 and our life will be better and the persons around us lives will be better. Well, Jesus said, point blank, man, if you don't forgive your brother, your daddy can't forgive you. That's the bottom line. Amen. So that's what we need to focus on. Um, Pastor Major, I love that concept you gave just now about forgiveness because I think as flesh, that's one of our hardest things to do is to forgive. Back to the reference, uh, Travis gave saying that um, sometimes we do get scarred from the church and we love to call it church hurt. But if we go on our job and they hurt us, we still go back there. Mm -hmm. So as humans, I, I, even as Christ led me, the viewers of God, help me to forgive the person and to move forward. Yes. Because yes. by moving forward and forgiving, I'm pleasing you. Yes. So as Christians, our big mandate is to please God. Forget it. Even though it's hard, but like the Bible say, consider not the things of old. Forget the former things, nor consider things of old. Mm -hmm. That's prayer. So now I say, that's, that's, that's say, what? Okay. If I offended you, forgive me. But as I forgive you, and that's move forward. Mm -hmm. So I love that concept you give. Yeah. And, and to be honest, that is one of the, the hindrance of the church. Yeah. <laughs> we don't forgive. We hate to forgive people. You know? Okay, so what about people who, they, they have the saying, uh, they go to God for themselves, right? What about those who want to, uh, seek him themselves without uh, using the church. How do they pray? Because a lot of people think they know how to pray. What, what, which, what, what way do you would say is the right way to pray? Okay, there is no right and there is no wrong way when it comes to prayer. Prayer is literally communicating with God. But this, I must say, <clears throat> everyone needs the church. Because the Bible tells us, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a matter of time is, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Okay? A person don't have to come to church to get saved. You can get saved anywhere because God is anywhere. But for fellowship and for strength and for encouragement, the Bible encourages us to come and assemble. Okay? The word church is really called ecclesia, the call of ones, the selected ones, which means that God literally calls you out of a pack and have you set or separated. And that's why he calls us a peculiar people. He calls us a holy generation. He calls us royal priesthood. Because we are totally different. He calls us out. And because he calls us out, he wants us to be this unified body who are to sing his praises, to declare his word, and to show others how to live. So, I agree with you that you don't need to come to church to get saved. But when you get saved, you should you should come to church. Because you have a role to play in the church, in the body of Christ. You have a role to play. Well, that's a good point. But I, I, meant, I meant on the more um, prayer life. For someone who never prayed before, who never really 
know how to pray. How do they pray for the first time and say they want to go to God on their, uh, for themselves? They said if they're at home, they're ready to give their life. They want to say a prayer. What Which way? If they don't know how to, what way do you think would be the right way? Like what, how they should go in private? Should they say it out loud? Should they say it in their spirit? Like what method? Okay. Because a lot of people okay. don't. A lot of people feel like if they say it out loud or they shout, they might be heard or, you know, mm -hmm. What what way, you know? The, the prayer model is the our father prayer. Mm -hmm. He has left that there for us. Mm -hmm. But the prayer to salvation, I believe, is as simple as ABC. To accept the Lord, to believe in him, and to confess him. You go to Father God, I come in no other name but the name of Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. I accept you as my Lord and Master. I believe that you are the Christ who died for me. And I now confess you as my Lord and Master. It's as simple as that. Your faith and your belief. And let me tell you something. When you've said that, there's no feelings coming over you to say I'm saved, you know. You have to trust now in this God to carry you through. Because salvation is not a feeling. It's believing. Believing in the God who you've already just talked to. And he will carry you through. It's as simple as ABC. Let, let, let me just say something with the, um, Minister Martin. And you're right, because there are, there are some people who don't know how to pray. But they need to understand that prayer is simply talking to God. Yes. Whether it's verbally or whether it's in your yes. spirit, it's fine. The disciples had the problem too, you know, because they asked Jesus, Teach us to pray. So, the, the right thing really is that you need to let the individual know prayer is just talking to God. Talk to God how you talk to me. Alright? But when that person is, or when that person is, when a person grows more spiritually, okay, then his prayer method will change. You see what I mean? So the more you hang around people who pray, even his, his method will change. But literally, it's, it's just, you can pray with your mouth closed. You can pray in your mind, because God will read your mind. But again, like what you said, a lot of people don't know how, you see? So it's, just, there's, it's nothing hard about prayer, just literally communicating with God. Well, a lot of, a lot of people still, I mean, you, you're right, a lot of people um, still have those questions about how, how to pray. But um, I think another thing with uh, Christians too, I hear a lot of Christians when they pray, they feel like they don't get answers. You know, and I think the challenge with that is because we pray, but we don't give God time to talk. Yeah. You know, so yes. that's a time yes. to meditate yes. as, as yes. a Christian yes. to now hear. Yes. Just talk to me now. You know, just like a conversation we talk, I let yeah. you talk, now you listen. Yes. I listen, you know, vice versa. Um, what encouragement you could give people who have lost everything last year, you know? I think... What encouragement is that, like I said earlier, we got to talk about recovery. Um, you didn't get everything one shot. It happened over a period of time. And if you put your faith and confidence in God, God will restore it. But the beauty about it is, He will give it to you double. And the person that comes to mind is Lot. He lost everything, every single thing. But the Bible tells us He held on His integrity. All right, uh, Lord, not Lord. Job even get to a point. Job even get to a point where he said, "Go and slay me." Yes. Yet, will I trust him? And I don't, you know what he's saying? I don't care how bad it get. I mean, he may he can even kill me, but in killing me, I'm going to trust him going down. And the Bible, the oh God, the Bible, God looked at that and saw Job's faith, and because of that, God said, "I got to give this man double." God is literally bragging on Job's action, bragging on Job's response, bragging on Job's faith, bragging on Job's confidence. Because whatever the devil, whatever the devil hit Job with, Job still praised God. And God said, I gotta give this my devil. And so anyone who lost whatever they have in, in, during this um, pandemic, just like how Job put his faith and trust in God. You put your faith in trust in God. If God can give it to you then, God can give it to you now. 
Pastor Major, I believe too that that's where the body of Christ really is going wrong with us. Um, our faith is not grounded where it is, especially after this pandemic, because there are some who lost jobs and some who lost family members and who lost, they mostly lost everything. So right now they're saying, what I've been through in 2020, how am I supposed to recover? But like you say, it's where your faith lies. Mm -hmm. Once you put it in God, mm -hmm. once you truly trust God that He is a restorer to those who seek Him, He'll give it back to you. Mm -hmm. so, Minister Martin, I have a question for you. Based on what Pastor Major says, um, the scripture says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. What happens to those who, who, don't, who, don't, who don't come to church and who's not hearing the word? But Minister Kate, this is why we have the same type of program, mm -hmm. The Voice of Pilgrim. This is our fourth year now, and we've been reaching out to communities at large, most of the world. Because mm -hmm. this this program, if 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 we get it um, radio, tape, email, it is shipped out sometime to family members. So this is all over. We have persons tuning in to the radio stations and more so now. We are going to a broader span. We are going now to Facebook and um, I guess Instagram and YouTube and whatever else. Yeah. So the word is getting out Very there. Much. Still radio and so the word, the, the word is being preached all over. So they have no excuse when it comes to getting the word of God. The word is being disseminated out in every which way we can. I hear you guys are speaking a lot about faith. And you said, Pastor, that the Word gives people faith, right? Um, I think that's what you said about the Word encourages people so that gives them faith. It increases the faith. So, what advice you can say the Bible tells you about pandemics? So, how people can have, have faith during a pandemic? Well, when it comes to pandemic, pandemic is just literally in the Bible um, a disease, um, famine is a pandemic, and God, he, he, he keeps his people in, in famine. He keeps his people during pestilence. If you think of children of Israel in, in the land of Egypt, so all they went through, um, God said, okay, I'm going to send a dead angel, but um, I want you to secure yourself because... The blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb has to be applied to the door. And whenever the dead angel comes through the land of Goshen, he's going to look for the blood. If he sees the blood, he passes over. So when it comes to pandemic, any pandemic, God is still in control. And he keeps those who trust him. He keeps those who believe in him. Alright? And so pandemic is nothing to God. Pandemic shouldn't, as Christians, we shouldn't be living in fear because of the pandemic. Because we got to realize that even this life is not the end. There is a better life. There is another life. Okay? And so most people live in fear because they want to hold on to this. But we got we to understand that if the pandemic don't get real, something will. But we have a better life. Because yes. our faith and trust is in our Almighty God. That's a good answer. As we wrap up, um, Mr. Martin, do you have any final words? Tonight, I really would like to thank our listeners to 107.9 each Wednesday at 10 p.m. for tuning in to The Voice of Pilgrim. We had numerous phone calls of congratulations and asking um, how is it going at Pilgrim and what's going on. And they were just congratulating our pastor for the timely messages that came on. But we want to thank our radio personnel, 107.9, and more so, I would like to thank our sponsors for making it possible for us to come <coughs> on the radio. Mind you, we could use one or two more sponsors. Let me draw that in right now. Feel free to call me if you need me, 557-5939, because I really need you. But I want to thank you guys for all you have done in helping us to carry the word of God throughout. 
the length and breadth of the world. Thank you so much, but know that we are not off air. We have moved to another day and time. Mondays, 8 p.m., 107.9. We are looking forward to having you join us with our new format, which I am sure you would appreciate. God bless you. And again, thank you. The last thing you have, any final words? I just want to encourage our listeners, like I started, two words. Pursue and recover. This is our year to pursue and recover. And in doing so, trust the Lord. Because the Bible tells us, He has a better future for us. And so those of you who are going through a rough time, this is your year to get it back. But in doing so, your relationship with God must, must be better in order to get what God has for you. Well, that's our show for this evening. Um, it goes. I'm getting you to mind because you're not giving it. No problem. That's that. And we thank you guys for listening. And we ask you to please tune in on next week, Monday, where our guest will be Minister George Rogers and Sister Anishka Pauli, two financial experts who will be talking about recovering from 2020. So we ask you please tune in for an exciting show. Well, with that being said, if you have joined us late, uh, you can check us out on our social media platforms at The Voice of Pilgrim on YouTube, Facebook, and so on Twitter, or our email at thevoiceofpilgrim at gmail.com. Join us next week, same channel, same time. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to The Voice of Pilgrim, which was brought to you by Jonah Telecom Bahamas Limited, 3768999. They install and maintain telecommunication towers from Bimini and Grand Bahama in the north to Inago in the south to ensure clear, continuous cellular service throughout the Bahamas. Easy Trucking, 3574394. They specialize in flatbed and container deliveries and 20 to 40 foot chassis rentals. They make trucking easy with over 24 years of experience in the heavy hauling business. BOS Martins Trucking, 4368189. For moving, picking up, and delivering items, BOS Martins Trucking offers professional courtesy service. For all your everyday trucking needs, give them a call. The Craft Shack, Wolf Road, opposite Windsor Park, 329-7412 specializing in Junkanoo and Carnival supplies, balloons and party supplies, hats, fascinators and jewelry making items. They supply the items, tools and decorations for all your craft needs. And also the fine members of Pilgrim Baptist Temple. Tune in next week, same time, same station, where we will be happy to bring you another broadcast of The Voice of Pilgrim. God bless you and have a wonderful evening.